Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video, we're going to talk about transformations. Specifically, we want to learn the definitions and be able to identify the domain, codomain, image, and range of a transformation. So let's get started. A transformation is a mapping between two spaces. Specifically, if we have two spaces, which I'll represent here by these little squiggly areas, a transformation will take an element of one space and assign it to another value from the other space. It maps this location to this location, is one way we can think about transformations. A more concrete example that you may have seen before is the idea of function. Here we've defined the function f of x equals 2x minus 3. And we can think about this function in terms of a transformation. The name of our transformation is f, and is taking x values and mapping them to the function values, the outputs. We have an input and an output for these transformations. Now in this case, because what we're plugging into our function is just a real number, we would say this function is mapping values from the set of all real numbers to, and then we have to think about what possible outcomes we could get from this function, what the outputs could look like, and the outputs in this case are all also real numbers. So we're saying this function maps from R to R. That's what it's doing in general. If we look at a specific example, we would say this function, it maps the number 1 to what number? Well, if we have a 1, so if I have my space over here and I draw the number 1 right there, it's taking this 1 and it's mapping this 1 to some output value. If I plug in 1 into this function, I would get 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. So our function takes the value 1 and maps it to the value negative 1. There's negative 1 over here. As another example, I could take the function 3, and that would map to the function 3. Now that's how this specific function is a mapping. It's mapping numbers from the set of all real numbers to the set of real numbers. But it doesn't always have to be that. I could have some other function I would call g, for instance, and it could take numbers like this. It could take a point value, like the point 1, 2, a list of two numbers, and map them to a single number, the number 3. In this case, g would be a mapping from R2, a set of all lists of two numbers, mapping it to R. So this is kind of talking about the, the action of a transformation, what it's doing. It's taking some input value and transforming or mapping it to some output value. Now, why are transformations are important in the study of linear algebra? Well, we can think of a matrix multiplication as a form of transformation. So I can look at this transformation. I'm going to call this transformation capital T, and it's going to represent this multiplication by the matrix A. And it's taking input values of x, this vector that I would input, and the output is going to be what happens when I take x and multiply it by A. That's going to be the action of this transformation. Another way I could write that is it's taking x values and it's mapping them to those b output values. And if we think about the way we represent that last function in terms of mapping it from r to r and try to figure out what this transformation was doing, it's taking that x vector. What size is this vector x in this specific case? x is a 2 by 1 matrix. So that is it's an element of r2. And it's mapping them to all the outputs. Well, b is an example of one output. And it's a 3 by 1 vector. So what this transformation does is it takes R2 vectors and it maps them to R3 vectors. That's what the action of multiplying by this matrix does. So this is a, a transformation from R2 to R3. Now, why R2 to R3? Well, once again, we can see the inputs had to be two-dimensional. That's my vector x. And it really has to be that way to do the multiplication because A is a 3 by 2 matrix. So the rows of X have to match up with the columns of A. So anytime we have A as a M by N, if we generalize this, then the associated transformation will be a mapping from Rn to Rm. And that's kind of a rule we can see. Now, we keep talking about mapping this transformation from places to places. Well, let's get into our definitions now. 
We have four de definitions, the domain, codomain, image, and range. Let's see what those things are. The domain is where all of our inputs live. It's the space we're mapping vectors from. So in this case, the domain would be R2, because all of my input vectors are those x vectors, and those are 2 by 1 vectors. Now the codomain is just where all the outputs live. So in this case, the result, all my b vectors, are three-dimensional vectors. They have lists of three numbers. So this is R3. Our codomain is R3. Now what about the image? The image is a specific output given a certain input. So for instance, we would say that the image of the vector 1, 0 under the transformation t is the vector 1, 3, 1. So it's the specific output given a certain input. 1, 3, 1 is the image of the vector 1, 0 under the transformation t. That's one image. Now what is the range? The range is the set of all possible images. The set of all possible images. So let's look at that last one in a little bit more, more detail. What is the range of this transformation? Well, if it's a set of all possible images, then let's take a see what that would look like. If we have our matrix 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 1, and we're looking at all the possible outputs, no matter what we input, so let's input some x1 and some x2, some arbitrary numbers, and then the result of the transformation would be x1, 1, 3, 1, plus x2, 2, 0, 1. Given some x1 and x2, this is what the output will look like. So this would be the set of all possible outputs. But when we write it like this, we can really see that this range value, the set of all possible outputs here, is just the span of these two vectors, 1, 3, 1, and 2, 0, 1, which really are just the columns of our matrix A. So we can actually describe the range of A as just the span of the columns of A. Now notice because the range is the set of all images, all the outputs, that it is going to be some subset of the codomain, but it might not necessarily be the whole codomain. For instance, our specific case, our range is just the span of these two vectors. Well, I can't get to every list of three numbers. I can't get to every vector in R3 looking at a linear combination of just these two. The span of these two vectors is really just going to be a plane in R3. So here the range is not the entire codomain. Now let's look at an example problem. So now we have a new matrix A. We'll let T be the transformation representing multiplication by A. And then we want to find the following items. The domain of T, the codomain of T, the image of a certain vector under T, and the range of T. So at this point of the video, I really encourage you to pause the video and work through these four questions actually write them down on a piece of paper. And then when you're all done, unpause the video. So go ahead and pause now. Now that you've had some time to work through this problem, let's go ahead and think about it. What is the domain of T? Well, the domain is a set of all possible inputs. So if I wrote this multiplication out, this process of taking some vector and multiplying it by A to get some output, what would the size of this X vector have to be? Well, remember, the rows have to match the columns of A, so I'd have to have x1, x2, and x3. So where does x live? It lives in R3. What about the codomain of T? That's where the outputs live. Well, if I did this multiplication, it's really just a linear combination of these columns, and these columns just have two components. So my output would live in R2. What about the image of 3, 1, 2 under the transformation of, of T? Well, the transformation is going to take 3, 1, 2, and the transformation is just taking our matrix and multiplying it by that vector. So in this case, the result will be, the image will be, 3 times the first vector plus 1 times the second column 
plus 2 times the third column. This looks like 3 plus 2 plus 6 is 11. And 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1. So this looks like the vector 11, 1. And then lastly, what's the range of t? Well, the range of t is all the possible outputs. So if we take a times some random x and actually do that multiplication, we'll get x1 times 1, 0, plus x2 times 2, 1, plus 3, x3 times 3, 0. Now I know that the set of all possible outputs has to live in the codomain. So it has to be a subset of R2. The question is, is it a point in R2? Is it a line in R2? Is it all of R2? Well, it turns out, if I take a linear combination of even just these first two vectors, I should certainly be able to get to every point in the plane. Graphically, we can see that by, if I plot the vector 1, 0, and plot the vector 2, 1, right like this, once again, if I take any linear combination, so that means maybe two of these or three of these or anything along that line, plus anything along this line, and then I take that linear combination, I should be able to see that I can really get anywhere in the plane. So that means the range of t should be all of R2. All right, now that we've gone through this example problem, that concludes this video. Thank you.